Question 16. Simplify each expression. Part A, we have 10t squared times r plus 3 over 5 times r minus 3 times 2 times r minus 3 over r times t. So when it comes to this question here, when we're multiplying fractions, we don't need to worry about finding a common denominator. We can jump right to putting these two fractions together. And so I have 10 times 2, which is 20. I can rewrite the t squared, and then generally we put our things in brackets after the things that aren't in brackets. So I can rearrange it like this. Same idea down below, the 5, r, and t are outside of brackets, and then I can put the r minus 3 after. So now that I'm here, I can see what simplifies. If I have the exact same factors above and below, I can cancel them out. Because whenever you take something and divide it by the exact same thing, it equals 1. And 1 times anything, the 1 doesn't really need to be there. So with that in mind, I can do r minus 3 divided by r minus 3. If I look at 20 and 5, both of those numbers are divisible by 5. And both of them have a copy of t as well. So t squared up top, t down below. So I could divide the top and bottom by 5t as well. So up top, 20t squared divided by 5t is 4t. And we still have the r plus 3 left over. Down below, we have 5rt divided by 5t, which is just r. And that would be it. Keep in mind, though, that we also need to state our non-permissible values, and they need to be stated before we start canceling things out. So in this case, we could take them right from our original printed version, what the question was. So my non-permissible values here, I know that r cannot be equal to 3 because of this factor right here, and I know it can't be equal to 0 either. We also have another variable, though, and I know that t can't equal 0. So in this case, I have three non-permissible values, coming from two different variables. Now for part b, we have 4m plus 12 over 3m plus 9 times 3m plus 6 over 4m plus 8. So if you have a question like this, before I put these together into one fraction, because we, after all we don't need to find a common denominator, it would help to factor where possible. We have that as the first step here on top of the screen. So top left, 4m and 12 are both divisible by 4. So I could take out 4 as a common factor and write the remainder inside the brackets. Down below, same idea, except this time they're both divisible by 3. Second numerator, they're both divisible by 3 once again. And second denominator, they're both divisible by 4. So this would be a question where I could combine them like I did in the last example, but I notice right away that a lot of things are going to cancel out as it's written right now. So I see m plus 2 cancels out m plus 2, m plus 3 cancels out m plus 3, and when I'm multiplying fractions, I can also cancel across different fractions as well. 4 cancels 4, 3 cancels 3. So in this case here, everything cancels out. But that just means that we're dividing something by the exact same thing. And whenever that's the case, our answer ends up being 1. So be careful, it's not 0, it's 1. Keep in mind though, we have some non-permissible values that we need to state as well. And they're going to come from before we cancel out. We have two NPVs that are going to come from here and from there. So m plus 3, don't want that factor to equal 0. So m cannot equal negative 3. And then we don't want m to equal negative 2 either, coming from the second thing in brackets down below. Now for part c. Here, there's definitely things that we can factor. It turns out that all four of these areas, numerators and denominators, like before, can be factored. But we're going to need to use some different strategies. Top left is an inspection question. And I know that because my leading coefficient is 1, so I'll be looking for a pair of numbers that add to 7 and multiply to 12. Bottom left is an inspection question as well. I'm adding to 4 and multiplying to 4. Top right, I'm adding to negative 1 and multiplying to negative 6. Bottom right, though, has two terms. I'm going to have to check that for a difference of squares. 
So before I can simplify this, I'm going to factor it. So top left, adding the 7 and multiplying the 12. However you get there, you'll find those two numbers are 4 and 3. Or 3 and 4, the order doesn't matter. Bottom left are two numbers that add to 4 and multiply to 4 are 2 and 2. Top right, adding to negative 1 and multiplying to negative 6. Those would end up being negative 3 and positive 2. And bottom right, it is a difference of squares. The way I can check is i got to make sure there's a minus in the middle. And that both of my terms are perfect squares. In other words, they can be square rooted nicely. Square root of a squared is a. Square root of 9 is 3. Those both work. And this would end up factoring to a plus 3 times a minus 3. Now, just like in part B, I can start to cancel out from here. This might be a place to look for common denominators as well, before I start to cancel things out, rather than doing it at the end like I did for A and B. So from both of these denominators, factors in the denominator rather, I know that A cannot be equal to negative 2. From here I know A can't be equal to negative 3 or positive 3. So I'm just going to write that out as plus or minus 3. So now I can start to cancel things out. A plus 3 cancels A plus 3. A minus 3 cancels A minus 3. And A plus 2 cancels A plus 2. So our simplified form here would be A plus 4 on top, A plus 2 down below. And this would be my final form. Try to resist the temptation, however, of simplifying or trying to cancel out the A's in part C, because once again, I don't know what the A value is, and I might not be allowed to do that. So let's say, for example, that A were equal to 3. I'd have 3 plus 4 over 3 plus 2. That'd be 7 over 5. But if I cancel out the A's, I'm saying that 7 over 5 equals 4 over 2, which doesn't make sense. So I'm not only able to cancel out factors if they're the exact same above and below, and they're not here. Now, as for part D, we have a division. So 8m cubed over 3n squared divided by 5m squared over 6n. So when we're dividing fractions, we can use that trick from way back in junior high that tells us that rather than dividing, we can have the opposite operation as long as we flip the fraction that comes after. So rather than a division, we have a multiplication, and I'll end up having 6n on top and 5m squared down below. Now this is one where I probably do want to multiply my two fractions together because I'm not really seeing much that cancels out right now. I could cancel out some m's and some n's, but the numbers I'm not getting too much from yet. So I'm going to multiply things together into one fraction. So up on top, I have 8 times 6. Then we have m cubed and n. Down below, 3 times 5, m squared, and then n squared. Now if I look above and below, I notice that 18 and 15, or 48 and 15 rather, are both divisible by 3. Both the numerator and the denominator share two copies of m. And both of them have one copy of n. So this is what I can divide out, 3m squared n. 48 divided by 3 is 16. m cubed divided by m squared is m and n divided by n cancels out. Down below, 15 divided by 3 is 5, m squared divided by m squared cancels out, and n squared divided by n leaves me with one copy of n. Now that being said though, when it comes to finding your non-permissible values for divisions, we're still going to take our NPVs from the bottom of both fractions because those are what are being divided, but I'm going to need to take my non-permissible value from the top of my second fraction here as well. The reason why is if I'm dividing, I'm dividing this whole fraction above and below. And so if I end up with a zero as the numerator or the denominator, we're gonna end up with a division by zero here, and that's a problem. So in other words, from the bottom of both, from the top of the second. And so that means here that I'm going to have a couple of non-permissible values, both m and n cannot be equal to zero. And that would end up being our simplified form with the restrictions for this question.